breakfast? Come and get it with Peter G'day. Russell G'day. Clark. Yes, it's that very exciting time of the week where you get dressed up in whatever you'd like, enter the kitchen with a man who knows all about food and prepare to cook like there's no tomorrow. Australia's favourite celebrity chef, Peter Russell Clark. Shit, we've moved up the bloody ranks. Celebrity now. Yeah, yeah you are. Right. I, look, we, we had a discussion about it and it, we went to a, a, a vote mm-hmm. and we decided that you are actually a celebrity. In fact, uh, I believe that you were mentioned in a newspaper or something or a magazine recently as What's Hot, Peter Russell Clark. That's... Have you seen the blooper tape? It's time to bring him back. Like, is hello, it, yeah. he is back. There was in what, the, am I, I am back. I'm yeah. Triple J. Know, exactly. it, was, it was in the confidential section of a mag- of a newspaper ah, that purports yeah. to be on, on the on cutting t- end. On top of things. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about oranges today. We, you know, we tend to think of oranges as just a lot of, say, segments and a bit of pith wrapped up in <laughs> Very much in like our, our radio show. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, an orange has got my, much more to it. It's got murder, intrigue, and quite a bit of bonking, let me, and uh, superior bonking, not just your average bonk. Right, mm. so we're talking See, oranges Nell, and Yes, bonking. oranges. Well, Nell Gwynn used to sell oranges outside the theatres, and the king came along and said, what a lovely bonk. Oh, what a lovely orange or whatever he did. Anyway, he took her home. Uh, <laughs> and ate then the he orange, said, what a lovely bonk. <laughs> it said, well, and Cardinal Worsley, who was the boss of the church then, he used to run round with an orange around his neck, uh, studded with clothes because he said it kept away the fleas. Now, he may have thought that Nell Gwynne bought the fleas in, but I tend to think he had crabs. <laughs> and whether it keeps... And so maybe he, he, he actually carried the orange in his jocks. He so, Peter, have. is this your first recipe for this morning, just <laughs> carrying around an orange with cloves in it? No, I was going to talk about that woman that that launched uh, her face launched a thousand ships, you know, uh, Helen of Troy. She, mm-hmm. in fact, was a Greek, not of Troy at all. She was uh, pinched by Paris, you remember, mm-hmm. and when he wanted to have his evil way with her, he said, can I give you a route? And she said, if you beat me in a foot race and so they took off and every time Paris went to pass her she threw this is Greek mythology this is your true stuff not made up she threw a golden orb over her shoulder and Paris stopped and picked it up that happened three times we're now told reliably I don't know by whom but reliably uh, that she didn't throw golden orbs she threw oranges Ah. and now you may think that that's got nothing to do with cooking but let me tell you what has, because when the Romans came along, they said, no more shall we bring in oranges from Greece because that's buggering up our orange industry, so we'll only take olives, no more oranges. So the Greek islands ripped out all their orange trees, and orange trees have got lateral roots, and they, going back to Nelgwyn, and that held the, <laughs> the earth onto the rocks of Greece. Oh. When they ripped out the orange trees and planted olive trees, they rooted. The whole bloody joint blew away. So, so with, you, without the roots of the orange trees that were holding everything together... Yes. Greece so you see how I've ocean. woven roots wow. in bloody with Nell Gwynn? You are a master storyteller, Peter Russell Clark, and a fantastic chef, we're told, although we haven't had many recipes so far this morning. Can we, listen to, music? Can we listen to some music and come back and actually get Most a recipe certainly. out of you? Robbie Marie... Can the Doctor Triple Jerry... Now, Peter, you've left us hanging because uh, we were talking about oranges, but no okay. recipes yet. And, and Nell Gwynn, who... Uh, Fabulous root, we're told. Yes, um, and a great actor as well, but also used to sell oranges. Exactly right. right. Now, get an orange in your hot little hand and a sharp knife. Cut all the skin off, including the pith. That's easy to do. Now, what you've got to do is cut each segment from the little uh, uh, sort of parchment-like... Uh, Envelopes that each uh, each segment's in. Mm-hmm. So you just run a sharp knife down each side, and you've now got pristine, beautiful segments. What does one do with them? Well, first of all, you can get a cauliflower, uh, which is called a cabbage with a college education. Let me tell you, <laughs> because man invented the cauliflower. You get a cauliflower, put it in a pot of water, boil it up, leaving all the leaves on it because they're really just cabbage leaves. Boil that up, take it out of the pot, and then put grated cheese, a good tasted grated cheese on it and 
the orange segments. Now, you might think that's boring. I do too, actually. So <laughs> what I do is forget the bloody cauliflower. Fuck cauliflower. After all, get a bit of fish, pop that into a pan with some olive oil, warm it through. That would take less than a quarter of a minute per side uh, because you turn the fish over. Then pour some orange juice into the pan where you've got a little bit of olive oil and some cream. Let that warm up and then pour in some brandy. The heated brandy, the alcohol, will act with the oil and the cream so it doesn't curdle. If it does, throw the whole thing out and go home. But you'll find out that it doesn't. Take the fish out of the pan, put it onto a plate, then put segments of of orange on the white flesh looks bloody lovely and then intersperse each uh, segment with olives it'll look bloody poofterish but <laughs> nevertheless people <laughs> like it they say fuck me dead look at that so I think it's a good idea and if you don't like it I won't come back next week oh, no come back we love you good. Peter Russell well, Clark. I, but did you, I don't think you like that uh, Nell Gwynn story. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. Well, I didn't know. I was only just did a bit of research while the song was playing and uh, found out that Nell Gwynn was actually, you know, one of the early actresses. Mm. And a wonderful Most route. And one of uh, and King Charles's. King Charles one, the, the original King Charles's. That's mistress. right. It was he got beheaded. Well, everyone did back then, though. They killed him. They tried, and Worsley, he, uh, that thing he put round his neck studded in clothes, that's what's called a pomade. Ah. Yeah, so there you go. And so, and how does that connect to the stuff you put in your hair to keep it slicked back? Pom- when pomade. Prince Charles was running around talking about Prince Charles, they ran out of ostrich feathers because they're having a war with South Africa, and the people of the court used to put the tops of carrots in their hair. How yeah, very intriguing. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, great story. Peter Russell great. Clark. What they did with the rest of the carrot, God only knows. <laughs> and on that note, we'll catch you in a couple of weeks, mate. Uru. Robbie, Marie, and the Doctor on Triple J.